Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nelly. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM only the classic hits here in Suva. Here about Batu Kola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sadi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Tonight on FPC News, Atar Singh resigns from union to enter politics. Linda Tambuya to campaign on women's health issues. And Grand Pacific Hotel marks 100th birthday. Good evening and welcome to FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Trade unionist Attar Singh has today resigned from his post as General Secretary of the Communication, Mining and General Workers Union. He will now contest the September 17th general election. I have made up my mind which party I'll be joining. I think it should be obvious to many people. Um, but I think uh, I'm, I'm prevented from revealing that you know, uh, at this point in time because uh, I think the decree bars me from doing that until I resign from my fictive position tomorrow afternoon in Nedi. Singh has been a trade unionist for over two decades. He will tomorrow resign from the Fiji Islands Council of Trade Unions and will officially announce the party that he will join. And the proposed Fiji United Freedom Party applied for registration with the Fijians' elections office today. The proposed party presented more than 5,000 signatures of its members and paid the registration fee of $5,005. The proposed president is Jagat Karuna Ratne, who is currently facing charges of writing seditious comments in public places. His case remains before the court. The president of the People's Democratic Party, Linda Tamboya, says if she is elected, her focus will be women's health issues. Tamboya was voted party president in March and has set her goals on empowering women. Chanel Sivan reports. From Wakanisila settlement in Kalambu, Nasinu, Linda Tamboya says... She felt the time was right to step into politics. Going forward, she has already set her goals. More job creations, we not just help men but also women. Even more um, you know, home businesses that they can be involved in to support the family and to support the children. But also even, even very simple things, for example, like uh, and, uh, I'm looking at a, uh, an early childhood education program in the communities. They can be run in their church halls and this can be done by young mothers. So that little children under five who we see running around in the communities, especially squatter settlements, they are not tended to and this is how access Accidents happen by these little children. Why not train these young mothers? Tambuya wants to see change and is counting on the votes of women to secure a seat in parliament. The difference that I will bring, certainly as a woman candidate, I believe I'm also able to offer the fact that I am a professional. So I have um, gone to school, I am um, uh, you know, I'm a lawyer by profession, and using that kind of expertise certainly would be um, helpful in Parliament. I think also as a woman candidate, I would be able to speak up not just for uh, women minorities, but also women who suffer disabilities. Tambuya was also a hibiscus contestant and won the crown in 1996. She says she will also work on improving maternal care. Satellite towns, which are no longer towns, but are really big enough to be cities to, to decentralize the maternity hospitals so that there's better maternal health and better maternal services for women. The PDP will advertise expressions of interest for candidacy this week and will reveal the names of its candidates next week. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Close to 400 women who joined the public service before 1st November 1971 will soon receive their long outstanding pension. Mika Longo reports the women have waited more than 40 years for justice on a claim worth more than $2 million. The women were entitled to pension under the 1958 pension ordinance until the Fiji National Provident Fund came into existence. Civil servants then were given two options, either they remain with a government pension or join FNPF. Only female officers who joined the civil servant within the period of 1961, December 1961 to November 1971. All those who joined the, the female officers who joined service at that time, they were 
eligible to remain on the pension scheme only if they had remained unmarried during their term time of uh, employment eh? under the government pension scheme. The women upon marriage were required to resign and be reappointed and automatically became FNPF members in the process and they no longer were entitled to pension. Within 15 years of that period, they were writing to government requesting that they be compensated for that period of time mm -hmm. because uh, most of them had lost out on the years of service prior to joining FNPF. The Finance Ministry is in the process of finalizing details of the payment of $2.5 million to the women. Once uh, all the paperwork is in line with the payments, it will either begin by next month or the following month. 356 out of the 371 women who lodged their claim are eligible for the payout. The Finance Ministry is going through some legal processes to finalize the method of payment. Mikalonga, FBC News. The Grand Pacific Hotel marked its 100th birthday in style, treating Fijians to a Swiss roll that has set a new world record. Rashika Kumar with the details. This is the world's longest Swiss roll, or jam roll, as it's better known in Fiji. 150.6 meters long, it was no easy feat for chefs at the Grand Pacific Hotel. This cake was baked by 36 cooks, and we used 2,500 egg, 200 kilo sugar, 100 kilo flour, 15 kilo butter, 150 liter cream, 150 liter milk, 300 vanilla pots, 5 kilo roasted nuts, 6 candy, kilo candy cherries, 10 kilo dedicated coconut, and 15 kilo cranberries. What better way to mark a centennial than to include everyday Fijians? and to give them a taste of what guests can expect at the five-star hotel. Thank you for the birthday today and happy birthday. Happy birthday, GPH. Happy birthday, GPH. And for the icing on the cake, oh, the Swiss roll in this case, contractors Lamana Development also handed over the keys to the hotel management. The doors to the GPH were also open to the public. The longest Swiss roll cake in the world was enjoyed by hundreds of people. And people were also given a chance to get a grand tour of the Grand Pacific Hotel. It is real beautiful. Rashka Kumar, FBC News. Coming up, young teens most at risk from dental diseases. Richie FM is number one in Singapore. Our kids' case on the air, Hamarek Satcha Sati, Richie FM, Alamba Sati. I love Richie FM, it's so hot. They came a la la, me hi hi. Thank you, thank you, Taubo, man. Mirchi FM is hot. Here at Rugby Town, Singatoka, love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is number one in Suva. It's hot. I'm going to get a little bit of 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 a little bit New Police Commissioner Major General Bernardus Hunaval is calling on the public to play a more instrumental role in helping put a stop to crime. Hunaval says the installation of four new CCTV cameras at the Mai Suva Park will ensure the safety of everyone. Vasita Kote Wasawasa reports. Only days into the new role, Police Commissioner Bernardus Hunaval is wasting no time in reaching out to the community. Community policing is an interactive process between the police and the community to mutually identify and resolve community problems. The community through this initi initiative becomes an active partner by identifying local policing needs and it is no longer and they are no longer the passive represent, uh, re recipient of police services. Unewald is calling on the public to be of more assistance to the force in working together to create a more safe environment. The four CCTV surveillance cameras were donated by Professional Electronics Hick Vision Limited worth $35,000. Footage from the park will be fed to a nearby police post. The launching this morning of an ex is an excellent example of this interactive process where the community is able to identify a policing need for this area and instead of being passive, 
and judgmental act actively participates in crime prevention through the installment of this CCTV and monitoring equipment. The new police commissioner reminded his officers will be handling the security footage to take care of the equipment, which could go a long way in saving a person's life. Masita Kote Mwasa FBC News. The general election is a fundamental milestone in our return to democracy and will be seen as an inflection point for future economic growth. Keynote speaker Thomas Sass told the Fiji Institute of Accountants Congress this political stability will bring more investor confidence. Christopher Chand reports. Fiji's economy has been steadily growing over the last four years. Elections in four months' time will add more strength to our emerging economy. That stability is very important for um, outside investors looking in to understand and articulate risk and opportunity. And so anything to reduce uncertainty uh, is nothing but positive. Sess is a retired American naval officer. Although he's not an accountant, he says they play a significant role in national progress. I think their fundamental role in understanding what's happening in an economy uh, makes that a very important profession. So accounting profession, like you've asked me initially, is a very honorable uh, profession. And it's one of the old professions in... The FIA says accountants are no longer just people who crunch numbers. Accountants play a very critical role, like I, like I mentioned. Um, we keep records, yes, certainly we do. Uh, but further to that, accountancy has now developed into business uh, decision uh, making. The role of an accountant is evolving in today's business world. They are the backbone for financial success and an invaluable asset to any company or economy. Christopher Chand. FBC News. Tooth decay and dental disease have been found to be most common among Fijian children from the age of 15 to 19. Josephine Navula has more. More than 300 staff and students of Nakasi High School received free dental treatment after the National Oral Health Week. Subdivisional Deputy Dental Officer Dr. Manoa Tawakivo says dental care should never be taken lightly. Eight out of ten children are suffering from dental diseases. That's a huge number. Okay? Okay, from 15 to 19 year old, almost 98% have dental diseases. Dr. Tawakivo says the clinic at Nakasi High School, while commemorating Oral Health Week, is also designed to encourage children to take proper care of their teeth. He adds this is not the sole responsibility of the Ministry of Health. But we are so thankful to the Ministry of Education. They are our closest uh, ally. Okay? They, are, they have uh, given us, they have helped the Ministry of Health of um, making a policy. Yes, like, uh, for example, the canteen policy. Divisional Education Officer Central Serupe Peli Undre says such initiatives are to be commended. The Minister of Health has come up with a mission. And that mission is providing a quality, affordable, efficient and effective health services that are accessible by all communities. The same toothbrush and drill that was done here will be done to secondary school students in order to cater for the 98% who are suffering from dental diseases. Josephine Nobula, FBC News. Jamie joins you now with your Friday night sports. Thanks, Amrita, and good evening. Coming up, Flying Fijians team announced and Fiji football's under 19 open OFC qualifiers with a convincing win. These stories and more after the break. Today FM is number one here in Singapore. We are today FM in Lambasa. It's rock! My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. Uh, listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks in Suba. Lodoka City love today's kid music. I love Today FM because they play all my songs. We love Today FM at Vuniva Lambasa. Yeah, it rocks! I love Today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.
Welcome back to FBC Sports. Vodafone Flying Fijians coach John McKee has announced his 30-man team and coaching staff for the upcoming June internationals. French top 14 to lose forward Akapusingera will captain the side for the tests against Italy, Samoa, Tonga and the Cook Islands. Elena McDonald has more. Without any further talking. We'll... Making a comeback to the Flying Fijians is Sunia Koto, while Super Rugby reps Nemani Nandolo and Aseli Tikoirutuma have confirmed their availability, however could be in doubt for the first test against Italy. The Glasgow, the Glasgow team uh, are in the final of the Rabobank League, so that they, they will actually play on the 31st of March, so that they won't be joining the squad until probably the Wednesday before the Italian test. A star-studded backline in Jim Nangusa, Metuisela Talimbula, Waisea Nayada Levu and Cyril Mbombo has kept Fiji 7s flyer Samisoni Viriviri out of the final 30. The selection has been difficult and some very good players have narrowly missed out on winning a place in the squad due to the depth of players that we have. McKee's named four assistant coaches in Mosese Rauluni, Alan Muir, Andre Bell and Alifereti Modelutu. This will be the first time in a long time Vodafone will reappear on the Flying Fijians jumper. Someone who follows rugby eagerly, we, uh, we can't wait for this test to happen. Majority of the national side will be in camp by May 28th. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Fiji under-20 ruggers were today hosted to a farewell breakfast by their sponsors, Vodafone Fiji. After months of preparation, the team is all geared up for the Junior Rugby World Championships in New Zealand. Vasita Kote Wasawasa reports. <laughs> Three months of intense training are now coming to a head with the team ready to fly out for the championships. We are confident that our boys are the best of young Fijian talent and they are fully kept up and ready to battle out for the JWC title. Winning the title will be another milestone. Achieving it, we are very happy, very confident that the players will put in their 100% effort in making the country proud. The 11th ranked team would be trying to better their standing when they face Wales in the tournament opener on June 2nd. It's weird, the confidence in picking the team. And I know that you know, they believe themselves in going out there and playing as a uh, Vodafone Fiji under 20 team. The player who was there last year and knows what is expected from his side has a message for his players. Just to uh, work together as a team. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, just to lead the team well and uh, actually support what the management uh, on. There are a lot of expectations on these young players to deliver in the two-week tournament. Vasita Kotimasumasa, FBC Sports. And for the second time, FBC TV will bring coverage of the Junior Rugby World Championship matches that will be played in New Zealand this year. All of Fiji's games will be shown live with a total of 30 matches to be televised. This will give you the chance to see our boys in action against the top 12 junior rugby nations in the world. Our coverage starts on June 2nd and runs the length of the Junior World Championship when matches wrap up on the 28th. The Vodafone Fiji Under-19 football team has secured their first win in the OFC Under-19 playoffs at the NZ Stadium in Suva. In what was a one-sided affair, the host defeated Minos American Samoa by four goals to nil. I would say win is a win, and uh, we came out to get three points, and we got three points. But yes, finishing needs to be improved a lot. Yeah, I looked at some of those stats, and there was a lot of uh, off targets. So, what are you going to do to work on that? Uh, this happens uh, in the first games, and then as as we we'll go along, players will get settled. But yes, we are, we are going to improve on our finishing. I think we're just going to try to learn you know, the mistakes from today and try to carry on because this is our first game. I think the first game always had, so I'm trying to learn you know, some of the mistakes. We got a lot of mistakes, but uh, I'm, we, this is going to be the first game. Then we'll see from here, then we'll try to develop to our second game. Games continue this hour between Vanuatu and New Caledonia, followed by the Solomon Islands versus Papua New Guinea match. That will air live on FPC TV at 7.30 this evening. Meanwhile, Nandi can expect a tough outing in the 2014 Vodafone Fiji Fact. Launched last night in Suva, the Jet Setters are top seeds in Pool B alongside Suva, Navua and Lautoka.
while last year's losing finalists Rewa, Lead Pool A, along with Mba Lambasa and Nandrunga. Major sponsors Vodafone donated $75,000 to the Fiji Football Association for the competition. Fiji Fact organizers say they are glad districts have accepted the new 90-minute match format. Because of it being played over 90 minutes, we cannot play more than one match in a day. And as a result, we had to extend the playing days. We understand the district associations are aware of it. The whole Fiji public have been crying that we should introduce 90 minutes soccer and now that we have done and I'm sure the soccer public are enjoying the 90 minute football. The first round of the Vodafone Fiji Fact will be at Ratu Thakambau Park on June 20th. The semi-finals and finals will be on June 28th and 29th. That was your sports for tonight. It's back to Amrita now with business. <laughs> Fiji's manufacturing sector will receive a huge boost as Paradise Beverages Fiji Limited embarks on an $18 million upgrade. Project Bulavo will see the expansion of the Suva facility into a modern state-of-the-art brewery. Ritika Pratap reports it's part of a three-year, $44 million plan. This is the largest investment by Paradise Beverages in its 58 years of history. Today is a milestone in the history of Paradise Beverages. It's had two names, but it's always produced good, high-quality beer. The result will be a modern, state-of-the-art brewery that will allow the company to increase its footprint in the region and even further afield. The introduction of a new technology will also place Fiji as one of the manufacturing powerhouses in the region. Not just in manufacturing, but across the broad front. As you know, we have been focused on fostering an environment that allows both existing companies and new entrepreneurs to benefit from the economic boom underway in Fiji across a whole range of sectors. The company already contributes over $1 million per week to the Fijian economy and there are plans to further expand exports. And now we're going to export to the world, which is in line with the strategy of the Fiji government. We're going to support the Fiji government and support our workers by taking our business to the world. We're going to try and double our volume over the next three to four years. Fiji Bitter, Fiji Gold and Fiji Rum have been popular locally and in the region. With this expansion, Paradise Beverages wants to make a name for itself in other parts of the Pacific. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. After a cool night and good weather throughout the day, how are things shaping up for the weekend, Trish? It's looking really good for now and started off today with fine weather in Nadi Lotoko, Mbalambasa and Sabu Sabu. Today's temperatures cooler in the east with Sabu Sabu the lowest at 27, Suva 28, whereas in the west it was warmer, Nadi Lotoko, on 29 and the highest Lambasa hit 33. By the way, it will still be cool tonight, but not as chilly as last night, with the lowest expected to be around 18. Tomorrow's forecast is more fine weather, much like today's for Suva, Nadi, Lotokamba, Sabu Sabu and Lambasa. Sunday looks to be another fine day, so the weekend weather looks good. For Mariners, a strong wind warning is in force for Yasao waters, Vatuira and Kandavu passages. Southeast winds 20 to 25 knots are bringing moderate southerly swells. This beautiful rainbow was caught by Pravind Rohit at Saru in Lotoka. Like Pravind, if you have a wonderful weather photo, send it to us at citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. Thanks Trish, I haven't had a chance to spot a rainbow in a while. The headlines once again, Atar Singh resigns from union to enter politics. PDB President Linda Tambuya to campaign on women's health issues. And Grand Pacific Hotel marks 100th birthday. Top poll question now. Should tollways be introduced on the roads? Visit our FPC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes.fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FPC News. 
Or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's FBC News tonight. I'll be back tomorrow evening. Until then, from the team and I, good evening. Gonga Elambasa, Bull FM, number two and a serre, and the Teletan of Rome and Bull FM, number two and a serre soup. Go wait to go to Graki or Revit in Stima, our Teletan of Rome and Bulla. Tolomena Fizi, Bull FM, number two, a single doca. Bulla Bina, Terra Roma, Bulla FM, number two, Bulla Bulla FM, number two and a serre.